The NFC Championship game is set as the San Francisco 49ers will hit the road and head to Philadelphia to take on the Eagles in Sunday's NFC title game. Coming your way on today's show, we're going to preview this matchup between two of the best, most successful, and most well-run organizations in the sport for Philadelphia. Their seventh NFC Championship game over the last 21 years, and it's the Niners' sixth trip to the Final Four since 2011. And if you think the Niners will be victorious to get back to the Super Bowl, I want you to hit that thumbs up icon, like the video, and with that, let's preview this awesome matchup. It's another Victory Monday right here on the San Francisco 49ers Report and our NFC Championship Game Preview is presented by Roan. 20% off your order if you head to roan.com slash chatsports and use the promo code chatsports. I love their commuter collection and their commuter dress shirt. It's comfortable, breathable, stretchable fabric. We'll put that link in the comment section and the description of this video. So the stage is set as the 49ers and the Eagles, the two top teams in the NFC throughout much of this year and in my my opinion, these two organizations have been on a collision course to meet here in the NFC Championship game the last couple of months. They will play on Sunday at Lincoln Financial Field for the right to head to Glendale, Arizona to compete in the Super Bowl against the winner of the Kansas City Chiefs and the Cincinnati Bengals. There are so many storylines within this football game, a star-studded matchup between two loaded rosters, and Philadelphia does open as two-and-a-half-point favorites. It's going to be interesting to see if that line does fluctuate throughout the week. Even if it gets Philadelphia up to three-point favorites at home, the over-under set for 45 and a half. Vegas and the odds makers expecting that this is going to be about a field goal game. Kickoff is set for Sunday afternoon, and of course, we'll be doing a watch party for it right here on the 49ers Report. How San Francisco got to the Final Four. They started off three and four. They had those confounding and confusing early season losses to the Chicago Bears, Denver Broncos, and Atlanta Falcons, but from that point on, they went on a tear. 12 wins in a row after taking down the Dallas Cowboys yesterday at Levi's Stadium in that epic divisional round game. 49ers finished 13-4. and They clinched the NFC West and the number two seed. And in the NFL playoffs so far, they have taken down the Seattle Seahawks and the Dallas Cowboys into rivalry games. And for the 49ers... Throughout this winning streak, they have averaged more than 30 points per game, but on Sunday, it was more of a defensive slugfest between two of the best defenses in the National Football League, Brock Purdy, Kyle Shanahan linking up to really come through with that long clock-eating drive late in the game to make this a field goal game and bleed a bunch of time off the clock as they take down Dallas 19-12. to It is now 28 straight years in which the Cowboys have not advanced to an NFC Championship game. Really not much really to take away for the 49ers offensively in this football game against Dallas, but defensively they were so good with the dominant pass rush, elite linebacking play, and I thought their secondary did hold up, especially Jimmy Ward Matt up against C.D. Lamb and they forced two interceptions on Dak Prescott. As for how the Eagles got to the NFC Championship game, throughout this year, they've maintained the best record in the sport. They started off 8-0, then they lost to the Washington Commanders. They set a franchise record with 14 wins this year, 14-3, the final tally for Philadelphia. Because of those 14 wins, they locked down the NFC East and the number one seed, and they beat the New York Giants straight up demolish New York 38-7 to in the divisional round. Within the first couple of minutes of that game, it became a blowout right from the jump, and Philly was very well-rounded in the process. Jalen Hurts coming off that shoulder injury, 16-24 against the G-Men, 154 yards, three total touchdowns, two through the air, and Philadelphia averaged more than six yards per carry. Kenneth Gainwell, Miles Sanders, both terrific. And then on the receiving end, Devontae Smith leading them there with six catches for 61 yards. And this Eagles defensive line, which we'll talk about because it's a big key in this game against San Francisco, harassed Daniel Jones, and they stopped and were stout against that run game. So the question of the week, it is our poll question for today's show. Who you got at Lincoln Financial Field on Sunday in the NFC Championship game? 
PHI for the Eagles, SF for the 49ers. Let us know down below in the comment section. Now, today's show, as I mentioned off the top, is presented by Roan. 20% off your order if you head to roan.com slash chat sports. I'm wearing their commuter shirt right now, and men's closets were due for a radical reinvention. Roan stepped up to the challenge. Their commuter collection, the most comfortable, breathable, flexible set of products known to man, and here's why. They have shirts and gear for every occasion. Helps you get ready with the commuter collection for really anything out there, which offers the world's most comfortable pants, dress shirts, quarter zips, and polos. You never have to worry about what to wear when you have the Roan commuter collection. Mobility is also everything. They have this four-way stretch fabric that provides breathability and flexibility that leaves you free to enjoy whatever life throws your way. Doing shows here at Chat Sports, playing 18 holes of golf. Look good, feel good, that's always the motto. And looking good is easy because it's time to feel confident without the hassle. And with Roan's wrinkle release technology, wrinkles disappear as you stretch and wear the products. It's that easy. Odor free technology as well so you won't be stinky. The commuter collection can get you through any work day and straight into whatever comes next. Head to roan.com slash chat sports promo code chat sports to save 20% off your entire order. That's r-h-o-n-e dot com slash chat sports code chat sports. It's time to find your corner office comfort. As for the playoff history between these two organizations, San Francisco and Philadelphia don't really have much of a rivalry. They only have met one time in the NFL tournament. It came in the 1996 wild card round as the 49ers did win by a final score of 14-0. Also of note here is the quarterback matchup between Jalen Hurts and Brock Purdy. Jalen Hurts is only 24 years old, coming off a near MVP caliber season. Brock Purdy now 7-0 as a starter. It is the youngest NFC title game quarterback matchup that we've ever seen in the history of the NFC championship game. But Jalen Hurts and Brock Purdy have played before in what was an epic game back in 2019 as Oklahoma took down Iowa State by a final score of 42-41, to and both of these quarterbacks went off in Norman, Oklahoma. Purdy went 19-30 to through the air, 282 passing yards, six total touchdowns to no picks, 55 rushing yards, lost by one. Jalen Hurts, on the other hand, 18-26, 273 yards, five total touchdowns to one interception, 68 rushing yards for Hurts, and Oklahoma able to get the nail-biting victory by a final score of 42-41. to Still a lot left to get to here in our preview show, and there's a lot to get to all throughout this week. You can expect multiple live shows. You can expect videos every day, sometimes multiple videos per day, and a watch party coming your way on Sunday. We're on the road now to 80,000 subscribers, so if you're a member of the faithful, make sure you lock us in. And to all of you who joined our Niners Cowboys watch party, we set a bunch of new records. A record for the amount of views on a watch party with 140,000 people joining us throughout the afternoon. A record in Super Chats with a total of 4,000. Thank you so much for all of your donations. It certainly humbles me and helps out the company, and that's why we give you daily content. And we want to welcome almost a 1,000 new subscribers to the show as well. As for how Jalen Hurts fared against the Giants coming off that shoulder injury, he did play in Week 18 against New York in the regular season finale, but Philadelphia didn't really ask him to do all that much. He did run it a little bit, so that tells me that the shoulder feeling pretty good, but you could tell that a lot of those design runs were out to the perimeter, and he did slide a lot to not get hit on that shoulder. Smart play, if you ask me. Hurts through the air, 16 to 24 against New York in that thrashing. 154 passing yards, three total touchdowns, two through the air, no interceptions. And everybody might want to point to the lack of yards, yards per attempt, whatever. He had a quarterback rating of 112. That's the highest in the history of the Eagles franchise in the playoffs. As for Brock Purdy, he did struggle a little bit. I think this is more of a byproduct of Kyle Shanahan being a little bit too conservative. I didn't like how the 49ers ran a bunch of bunch and closed sets. I would have liked to have seen them spread it out a little bit more. That just opens up the vision for Brock Purdy to disperse the football like a point guard. 19-29, 214 yards. It's the first time since he took over as the team's starting quarterback, 7-0 and now. He's now played eight games that he did not throw for multiple touchdowns, didn't register any. No picks, though. That's good. And had a quarterback rating of 87.4. Who do you think will have the better game on Sunday in this quarterback matchup? Is it the rookie in Brock Purdy, 23 years old? Is it 
Jalen Hurts, 24 years old. BP for Purdy, JH for Jalen Hurts, let us know. As for Hurts, I thought he passed the eye test coming off that shoulder injury, and it's so obvious why Hurts is an MVP-level candidate. The offense is so dynamic with him as compared to Gardner Minshew. It's the pass-run threat, but also his deep ball accuracy is fantastic. He's very good on third downs. He can certainly break the defense down and pick up yards with his legs once the pocket breaks down. And a big key to this game for San Francisco, they have struggled this year against mobile quarterbacks. Marcus Mariota was fantastic. Justin Fields was really good. Patrick Mahomes was as well. Jalen Hurts, a mobile quarterback. Keep an eye out for that. As for Purdy, a little bit shaky against Dallas, but did make some big throws late to seal it in some really critical spots. San Francisco was so good on third downs in that game against Dallas. And again, that's one of the best defenses in the sport. Very well-rounded football team. As for a matchup, between two incredible teams here. That's what we're seeing in the NFC Championship game. And that's what you want to see if you're a football fan. You want to see the top two teams battling for the right to head to the Super Bowl. And these are two rosters with just incredible talent. We're talking all pros, future Hall of Famers, and multiple pro bowlers who are going to be lined up against one another. These are just some of the players, and honestly, we're not doing some guys justice who aren't on this list, but Trent Williams, Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, Nick Bosa, Fred Warner, Dre Greenlaw, Talano Hufanga, Jimmy Ward. Those are 10 stars on this Niners roster, among many, many more. And for Philadelphia, they also are loaded, like a locomotive train going down the tracks. Jalen Hurts, MVP type of season this year. Miles Sanders, more than 1,000 yards on the ground. A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith both had 1,000 receiving yards. Dallas Goddard, one of the best tight ends in the league behind Travis Kelsey and George Kittle. Jason Kelsey, Lane Johnson have been pillars of that offensive line for a long time. They're some of the best to ever do it. Hassan Reddick now has 17 and a half sacks in 18 games this season. Brandon Graham at 34 years old coming off an Achilles tear had 11 sacks and Darius Slay is an all pro caliber cornerback. And from my seat, I've said for months now, I have said for months now that the 49ers and Eagles were on a collision course to play in the NFC Championship game. It became pretty clear that at about the midway point of the regular season, these were the two best teams who are the most well-rounded, the deepest, the most complimentary with the really good coaching staff on both sides, very good offensive skill players, very good where it matters a lot along the offensive and defensive lines. And these have been the two best teams in the NFC, and now they're meeting up in the NFC Championship game. So we asked you for your prediction a little bit earlier. I want you to get a little bit more precise here. I want you to predict the score down in the comment section. Birds, Niners squaring off. Game is going to be awesome. Coming up next, we're going to talk about the 49ers and Eagles injury report, more keys to the game, and my prediction. You put in your predictions, I have to be fair and give you my prediction as well. Eagles injury front coming out pretty unscathed after this game against Dallas, uh, New York, excuse me. Avante Maddox does have a toe injury, missed the last couple of games in the regular season, did not play against the Giants because of that toe injury. He's a very good slot cornerback, and obviously Philadelphia needs as many cornerbacks as they can get to combat what the Eagles like to do offensively with the loaded offensive core. As for the Niners injury or a front, uh, injury front, this is the Niners injury report here. Ambry Thomas, did not play and hasn't played for a couple of weeks because of an ankle injury. Charles Amenihu left the game with that oblique injury. He's a very good defensive lineman who can play edge, slide into defensive tackle. And Christian McCaffrey was somewhat bottled up by Dallas, was nursing a calf injury throughout that game. We saw him with a heating pad on that calf. He did say early on Monday that he expects to be fine and good to go against Philadelphia, one of the more dynamic offensive players that we've seen in the history of the NFL with his ability to run the football and catch it out of the slot like he did yesterday with that big third down conversion late. As for some of my matchups to watch here, this is why I'm so excited about this game because the talent level is really just insane. And it features a couple of really intriguing matchups between two of the best position groups in the NFL. Eagles defensive line against the Niners offensive line, then the Niners defensive line against the Eagles offensive line. Let's spend some time on that because the Eagles offensive line and defensive line, great. Niners offensive line was bad against Dallas, but their defensive line is very, very good. The Eagles defensive line can wreak havoc and take over games. The 49ers offensive line really struggled against the Cowboys. If there's a point of concern for San Francisco, 
it's that this Eagles defensive line is spectacular. And their sack production was unbelievable this year. They had 70 sacks in the regular season, 15 more than any other team in the NFL. And they're the first organization since stats began being recorded in the early 1980s to have four players with double-digit sacks on the same roster. Hassan Reddick in the regular season led the way with 16, second only to Nick Bosa. Javon Hargrave, very good defensive and nose tackle with 11. Brandon Graham had 11. Josh Wett, very good edge. He had 11. And Fletcher Cox had seven. And for Hassan Reddick, he single-handedly changed the game against the Giants, and he has a very Nick Bosa quality to him. Good against the run. Even better as a pass rusher, his first step off the line of scrimmage really is special. And an edge rusher like this can serve as a closer in a playoff game like Nick Bosa has done so much. And that's what Hassan Reddick has been able to do with Philadelphia. 17 and a half sacks in 18 games this year, 16 in the regular season, 40 hurries in the regular season to go along with 26 quarterback hits, five forced fumbles. He is certainly a disruptor. And I thought that the 49ers, they were just way too conservative against Dallas. A lot of bunch formations, they didn't spread it out all that much, and they didn't try to push it downfield. If the Eagles defensive line can't get home, they're a little bit susceptible to some breakdowns at that safety spot on the third level for San Francisco to exploit. And I also think that George Kittle could have a big game here, but... Also, the Eagles' defensive line, if they do get a pass rush, that will certainly alter the 49ers' offensive game plan in throwing it because the Eagles' defensive line, they smothered Daniel Jones. And a pass rush, as I've talked about plenty here on the Niners Report, Eagles have it too, is a recipe to win in the playoffs. Last two Super Bowls, you've seen what happened. Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes were overwhelmed by the Rams and Buccaneers' defensive lines. They were harassed and pressured all throughout the day, and it's going to be a huge test for this Eagles offensive line or Eagles defensive line against this Niners offensive line and vice versa for the 49ers offensive line to hold up in pass protection. As for the Eagles offensive line against the Niners defensive line, that is another matchup to watch. And this Eagles offensive line, I think it's the best in the NFL. Every starting member of this five-man front was either named an all-pro, a pro bowler, or a pro bowl alternate. Jordan Mailata at left tackle. Landon Dickerson at left guard. Jason Kelsey, arguably the best center of all time at center. He played great against Dexter Lawrence and the Giants. Is Isaac Sayamalu set to be a free agent. He'll get paid. And Lane Johnson, probably the best right tackle in the sport. And San Francisco probably has the best left tackle in the sport in Trent Williams. The 49ers sack production going up against this offensive line. Nick Bosa at 18 and a half in the regular season. Samson Ebucom with five. So obviously, that's a huge gap. A lot of Philadelphia media types are saying that this 49ers defensive line is overrated. I disagree because sacks don't always tell the full story. I look at it as wins for a pitcher. A pitcher could literally go 0-15, but if they have a 2-9 ERA, that doesn't mean they had a bad season. They had a spectacular season. Their team just kind of sucks. Quarterback pressures, quarterback hits, sometimes more important and more notable than actual sack production. And don't let the Niners' lack of sacks fool you. Along this defensive line, they are deep. We're talking 2-3 deep at almost every single possession on that 49ers defensive line front. They're versatile. They're interchangeable along that defensive line. They run those twist stunts, and they can confuse the opposing offense. Speaking of the Eagles opposing offense and them being the opposing offense, it's going to be big for this Niners defense to be stout in run protection. They've been one of the best in the NFL, NFL this year against the rush. They're going to have to do it once again because this Eagles offensive line, as I said, is very good. Their ground game is excellent. And they were excellent against New York as they ran for more than 200 yards as a team and averaged more than six yards per carry. Kenneth Gainwell popped off 12 carries for a buck 12 against New York. Yards per attempt, 9.3. Miles Sanders had 17 totes for 90 yards. And Boston Scott, six for 32. Sanders and Scott averaging 5.3 yards per carry. And for this 49ers defense, as you see here to the right of your screen, they've been very good against the rush. Regular season numbers. Number two, 
as they only allowed the opponent to gain 3.2 yards per rushing attempt. So that's going to be a massive factor in this game. Rushing yards per game, also number two. If they lock down the Eagles' rushing offense and force Jalen Hurts to throw it, that could be a recipe for success for Philadelphia as San Francisco's defense also gave up a league-best 16.3 yards per game and a tick over 300 yards per game. Because the Eagles' rushing attack is so good and because they have – very good wide receivers and tight ends. And because Jalen Hurts can run it. 49ers linebacking unit, which is the best in the NFL, is going to have to have a big day. They're going to have to spy Jalen Hurts. They're going to have to be really good against the ground. So Jimmy Ward, Talano, Hufanga, also going to have to come up, play in the box, but also against an A.J. Brown, against a Devontae Smith, against a Dallas Goddard. This linebacking core is going to get tested. How about the play yesterday when Fred Warner was running stride for stride with C.D. Lamb right down the hash? Unbelievable. So, too, is this Niners linebacking core. Dre Greenlaw, Fred Warner, Aziz Alshire, the best in the sport. Now, I do host the 49ers report. Funny enough, I host Philadelphia Eagles now. There isn't anybody who understands these teams better than me, in my opinion. And that's why our coverage is going to be the best all throughout this week. Expert analysis, you want to interact with me, of course, subscribe, but hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at Chase underscore Senior. 49ers secondary going to be tested. The Eagles are loaded with offensive weaponry, and this is a 49ers secondary that at points has been susceptible to the big play downfield. It happened yesterday on that big play to C.D. Lamb. It happened two weeks ago on that touchdown throw from Geno Smith to D.K. Metcalf. Charvarius Mooney Ward, Diamador Lenore, Jimmy Ward. We're talking about you and the pressure is on you because A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and Dallas Goddard, they put pressure on opposing defenses. A.J. Brown set the record for the Eagles franchise with the most receiving yards in a single season with nearly 1,500 on 88 catches. He had 11 touchdowns. He was a top five wide receiver this year. Devontae Smith is another one, but on this team, he's the number two. He set the Eagles record for the most catches in a season with 95, nearly 1,200 yards, and Dallas Goddard missed some time, but still very good season for him. He is a menace to bring down in the open field with yards after the catch. Another big key in this game, simply tackling. I talked last week how, about how the Cowboys' level of physicality is going to have to match up with the Niners' level of physicality. They did. Can the Eagles match up with the Niners' physicality, with the Eagles' defense, and then tackling against the Yak Bros and the Yak Kings with San Francisco? 49ers are the Yak Masters, and the Eagles do struggle tackling. And Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, and Debo Samuel are so dynamic in the open field, and they're just a handful to bring down. Ayuk is slippery smooth, quick, and elusive. But with the ball in his hands, he's able to hit that next gear. Career season for him, more than 1,000 yards receiving. As for George Kittle, 11 touchdowns, all of them in the back half of the year. And we know that he's a Mack truck when he's running and bumbling and stumbling down the field. And for Debo Samuel, you get him a slant route, my goodness. He's like a running back out there trying to bring him down with how physical he is. And this Eagles team does struggle to tackle. So Kyle Shanahan, I want to see him scheme up this offense to create open space, unlike they did against Dallas, to get Ayuk, Kittle, and Debo the ball in space with an opportunity to pick up yards after the catch. The coaching matchup that I'm pinpointing here. I like Nick Sirianni. He has done wonders for this organization in two years as a head coach for Philadelphia. But the coaching matchup that I'm watching here, it's Kyle Shanahan, the offensive coordinator and head coach for San Francisco, the play caller against the Eagles defensive coordinator and Jonathan Gannon, who's in the running for the Houston Texans head coach opening. During the Niners' 12-game winning streak, San Francisco is averaging a league-best 30 points per game. And we know that Kyle Shanahan, in the run game and in the pass game, runs a lot of pre-snap motion with multiple players moving along the line of scrimmage. There are pool blocks to get the Niners out in space. He likes to scheme up and get creative with that ground game to try to find lanes and find the weakness of the opposing defense. And this is an Eagles defense that has struggled against the ground game. And this is San Francisco's specialty with what Kyle Shanahan likes to do with this being his bread and butter. So the creativity of Shanahan against Jonathan Gannon, a coaching matchup that I'm really looking forward to in this game because we know that Kyle Shanahan has been deemed a genius and throughout this 12-game tear, we have certainly seen the genius at play for Kyle Shanahan, and that could happen again to help lift the Niners to yet another Super Bowl. Telling Eagles defensive stats here. First in pressure rate this year, first in yards per play, first in passing defense, first in yards per attempt, 
through the air, first in tackles for loss, and first in opponent negative plays. So turnovers, which we're about to talk about, and putting yourself in a position to not be behind the sticks, have second and third in manageables, going to be key for the Niners as well. Speaking of keys, what is your biggest key to the game? I want you to let us know down below in the comment section. Sound off with what you think. A couple more things that I want to get to during our 49ers Eagles preview here. Turnovers will be key. San Francisco is 0-4 this year when they lost the turnover battle. Philadelphia, on the other hand, 3-2. and And some chat stats on these two teams feasting on turnovers. The 49ers average nearly 21 points per game with one or fewer turnovers by the defense. How about this, though? San Francisco averaging more than 30 points per game when their defense produces two or more turnovers. The Eagles, on the other hand, 28 points per game with one or fewer turnovers by the defense, and they average 29 points per game with two or more turnovers by the defense. So turnovers between two equal teams here who are both just loaded and chock full of talent offensively and defensively could decide this football game. One more time before we get to my prediction, who you got, PHI for the Eagles, SF for the 49ers, we want to hear from the faithful. As for my prediction, I'm going to continue to stand by what I've said for the last couple of months. I like the coaching edge for the Niners. I like their playoff level experience for San Francisco. They've simply played in more big games than this Eagles roster. It's going to be a beautiful day at Lincoln Financial Field on Sunday. High temperatures of 51 degrees, so you're not really going to have to worry about inclement weather here. It is going to be an equal surface. I think the Niners' defense matches up really well against what the Eagles like to do offensively, especially with their pass rush, them being interchangeable along the defensive line, their linebacking core being the best in the NFL, and just being able to cause havoc from sideline to sideline. And I think the Niners' defense and the individual players on it are able to stall and at least limit what the Eagles' potent offense can do. So I think this is going to be an all-time matchup. I expect it to be close. I expect us to be on the seesaw, but a Robbie Gold field goal, as he's now 29-29 in his postseason career, does decide it late. Niners win at 31-28. We'll be live later here on Monday. Stay tuned for that. Multiple live shows throughout the week, multiple videos per day all throughout this week. It's NFC Championship Game Week. We don't mess around here on the Niners Report. And for the best coverage, please make sure you subscribe.